sitting here with uh, Hans Laurentius, my dear friend. Uh, we talked to each other a couple of times in, uh, in Dutch. Yeah. And now for the first time in English. Mm -hmm. um, you give meetings. Yeah. And you talk to people one on one. Mm -hmm. They're sitting at, in the same couch I'm sitting yeah, right yeah, now. Right. And I see tissues here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is this subject uh, people or the subjects people bring into this room? Are they so uh, loaded with, uh, yeah, things that make them cry? Sometimes. Or they have a cold. <laughs> that can be also, yeah. yeah. But sometimes emotional issues arise and, well, tears yeah. cannot be avoided always. So. But you're no therapist. No. But still, I sometimes uh, confront people with issues or things. And that my may hit, so yeah. And people start to cry, or something releases, and it gives a few tears. It's not that they're crying all the time, mostly not, but it happens sometimes. So yeah. And um, can you tell me why is it that when I um, when you touch something inside me that I haven't felt for a long time, mm -hmm. that it automatically brings up a, a, a big emotional response? Well, exactly uh, like you said, because it's uh, repressed for a long time and basically everything seeks release, so it wants to be liberated. Mm -hmm. So it comes up and usually we hold it back, but if, it, if you don't, it just releases itself and it can bring tears or laughter or anger or silence. Yeah. And how come we hold so much back? We're afraid to feel everything. So as a child we learned to repress certain feelings because it's too over overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And for a kid that's four years old, you can understand that. That when parents have a row, for instance, or somebody is drunk or whatever, it's very scary for the kid. It can't handle it. So there's a sort of emotional decision not to feel everything completely. And afterwards, when you're 30 or 40, you have really learned not to feel things properly. Mm -hmm. So it's an automatic system, a conditioning to hold it back. And, you know, the show must go on and don't show your weakness. And because having emotions uh, is considered weakness. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's mm -hmm. just energy moving. And so we move along and withholding, withholding, repressing, repressing, and well, at, at some point it will burst. And it can be in a private session, but it can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, is there a certain age until when that when that repressing no longer works, or is it different? No, some some people uh, live to be a hundred, and are masters in repression. So. Yeah. And some people usually get into a sort of a crisis and then they cannot repress it anymore. And then a change may occur or not. May. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because when I start feeling again, all these emotions, uh, I could grab a bottle of beer yeah. or wine. Yeah, sure. Or run to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And if you're unlucky, he will give you some pills which will repress. Yeah. And in some cases, obviously, it's necessary because if somebody's really exploding and getting psychotic or suicidal, something needs to happen, obviously. But usually, it's more helpful to teach people how to feel and observe. Then there is uh, a change possible towards a more adult behavior or even awakening. Yeah. But it's only for some, so I get it that people grab onto something or some therapy which calms it down again or start to meditate to be calm again instead of allowing things to release themselves. Yeah. And are these only things from my childhood or also from, let's say, two years ago when my girlfriend broke up sure. and I didn't feel it at the time? Everything that you didn't completely feel and didn't completely face. But how do I know that I didn't completely feel or face? Uh, you, will, you will notice when something similar happens. Ah. So if you have two breakups in the past 
and another one is pending mm -hmm. you will start to feel very anxious and uncertain and will observe all kinds of unnatural behavior to avoid the repetition of that situation yeah. so you may start to please more mm -hmm. or be aggressive it depends on mm -hmm. how your programming is yeah and that's usually all kinds of old stuff mixing with the new stuff but it's kind of similar so you, you get a response based on the avoidance yeah so we start pleasing one another we have to save this relationship yeah yeah sure not because that i love that that girl or, mm -hmm. or woman or man but mm -hmm. because i don't want to feel yes past breakups yes exactly the terror is too big you have the the conviction that that you cannot handle it that you will go insane or die or mm -hmm. something that's, dramatic that's never the case it could be but usually no no i sat with people feeling through quite intense stuff and they didn't go mad and they didn't die and if they experience that a couple of times they get a new faith in their own system hmm. they start to learn hey i i think i believe that i cannot handle it but the actuality teaches me that i can yeah <sighs> and then slowly uh, it sinks in that it's more productive to sit with a strong feeling or walk with it and be with it mm -hmm. meet it then to avoid it or start drinking or eating yeah. whatever yeah so it's about the fear of feeling yes it's very important <coughs> okay so I, if i understand you right and we we got that fear in childhood because we yeah. couldn't feel everything yeah. at that moment yeah. mm -hmm. we our were unable our system wasn't ready yeah, the brain wasn't ready yet yeah and uh, from what age is the brain ready when you're fully grown or 14 or you say something like uh, that? It depends. Usually uh, people tell me that at like 20, 22, the brain is uh, completely uh, equipped. But it all depends on circumstances. When you have the luck to grow up with really adult adults, mm -hmm. they will probably teach you by words or uh, experience that it's okay to feel sad and they won't give you a cookie or a toy or uh, tell you to shut up or yeah. they, they will invite you to meet the feeling well those kind of kids will probably uh, have less resistance other kids who are constantly told uh, shut the fuck up or are distracted all the time uh, kid is sad put on the tv uh, mm -hmm. give it a, a lollipop uh, yeah. they will never learn to that it's better to meet so yeah. it depends on on the people around you too yeah I come from a Catholic uh, uh, family where everything was put under the carpet yeah. and when someone was uh, re really angry or sad or crying, shh, don't let the neighbors hear it. Well, there you go. That could Repression. be a condition also. Yes, yeah, yeah. sure, that helps. Of course, the adult, adults teach you to keep it in, Yeah. to not show, to not talk about yeah. it, to not... Be a man. Be yeah. a man, don't cry. Yeah. Boys, don't cry. The cure yeah yeah um is is it for for men um, do you meet more men who have difficulty with expressing their feelings uh, or feeling their feelings than women that's yeah, a good distinction because it's basically about feeling the feelings yeah, not, not expressing talking about it all the time yeah which is a bore people talking about their feelings mm -hmm. all the time come on you know Okay. And it's also postponing the feeling. Talking about the feelings is... Uh, the funny thing is, when you really learn to feel through intense emotions, there will be hardly any need to talk about it, because when it's felt through, mm. it's gone. Yeah. So it's hard to talk about something that is not there. Yeah. So all the talking about it, it's a little bit better than repressing it, because at yeah. least it moves a little, but it's not the end yeah it's just helping it to move but still we're not really feeling and a lot of the talking will be about why does this occur oh poor me uh, don't you think i'm i'm uh, pitiful mm -hmm. or uh, you gotta help me you know so it's still all in in the ego domain 
while feeling through is in, in, in essence an activity or a natural movement of consciousness. Consciousness meets everything immediately. It has no fear. It tends to move towards suffering instead of away mm -hmm. from it. So in the natural state, what would I have to talk about emotionally? When it arises, it is seen and felt and afterwards it will dissolve. There's hardly anything to talk about. Yeah. So what we really are doesn't say no to... No, it, it doesn't know, no. It doesn't it know, doesn't, no. No, it doesn't react anything. Reject, yeah. Yeah. What does reject? It's the, the, the fear system. So ego is a movement of fear. Mm -hmm. So the things we hear in our head, uh, don't go there, don't feel this, or you'll go insane. Yeah. It's basically fear using words. And it's what we call thinking. But it's not thinking, it's fear talking. <laughs> and we associate or identify with the fear talker. Yeah. That's what we call the, the false self or the ego. Yeah. It's always fear. Consciousness knows no, no fear. It meets everything. It's like this space, this room. Mm -hmm. We're totally welcome here. And we can dance or have a conversation or a, or, fight. Or a fight. It's all cool. Yeah. But there's something inside us, you call it the fear talker, that's a great statement, mm. a great name, that tries to avoid pain. Yeah. And does it also seek pleasure? Yes, yeah, sure it does. As a, as a, a substitute or something yes, to, to look at? Yeah, to compensate. Yeah. yeah so sure. I don't, know, I don't want this. Give me a happy movie. Mm -hmm. I can name, for example, when I'm at somebody's home. And they have music on, who is very melancholic, you know, music that, yeah, is a little bit depressing. Mm -hmm. I would say, oh man, please, put on something happy. Uh -huh. Is that my? That could be. Fear it system? could be a, a, a little bit of the fear that you don't want to feel your inner sadness. Yeah. So keep it happy. Keep it, let's say, superficial. Yeah. yeah. On the other hand, we can also have another movement that people. Uh, tend to, uh, no, let's make it more personal. I used to be depressed when I was a teenager. And sometimes the depressive feeling would tend to dissolve. Mm -hmm. And what did I do? Smoke another joint, put on some depressing music, yeah. so I would, went back into it. I was kind of addicted of feeling down. And a lot of people are very comfortable in a strange way with feeling not happy. Because yeah. that's what they know. So a lot of people that I meet here as well, and we have a talk, they open up and they feel the natural state, which is uh, relaxed and open and comfortable. Not, not really bliss, not an ecstatic thing, but it's really good and quiet and complete. Within five or ten minutes, thoughts will come up to try to fuck it up. Because they don't know how to be open and good yeah to be they don't know how to be happy for longer than let's say five minutes or yeah. ten minutes then there's some restlessness if there's not a problem who am i yeah osho gave a great talk about that the attachment to misery yes yeah exactly that's a f strange phenomenon but if you're starting to be aware of that then you have a chance but does that attachment to misery give gives us a sense of self? Yes, exactly. Me, me, the the one who always gets the blame. Me, yeah. who always mm -hmm. gets the bad stuff in his life. Yes. Then you're somebody, something. Yeah. You could even say that without a core of misery, who who are you then? Mm -hmm. If there's no problem to be solved, if there's no. Uh, Drama. Yeah, drama. Who am I without my problems? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, that happened because my sister or my father mm -hmm. or my mother was yeah. absent. Or yeah. That defines me. Yeah. No, it doesn't. But we believe it does. Yeah. For example, my father has the same thing. I also have tinnitus in his ear. Mm. And he got it about two years ago when he was drilling holes in the... In the, in the in the, how do you in the wall. In the wall, yes. Mm -hmm. And he, 
every time I see him, he talks to me, oh, I shouldn't have got the t tinnitus. I shouldn't have got it. Yeah. How could I be so stupid to drill those holes in the wall without using ear protection? Yeah. Every time, yeah. for two years. Well, there you go. It has become his new identity. Yes. Yes. Me, the t tinnitus uh, yeah. sufferer. Yeah, and, and give me attention because of that. But what is the right way to respond to such things? Not? That there is not a ground rule. You know, when you're present, you can never know what you will do. Mm -hmm. It is unlikely, though, to move along and sing the sad song along with somebody. <laughs> yeah. So maybe uh, you will burst out in laughter at one moment, or the next time, shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> yeah. or it could be anything. Yeah. Or you could give him a hug, mm -hmm. or give him earplugs anyway, yeah. or give him a new drilling machine <laughs> which will drill some more yeah. maybe it will go yeah. <laughs> it could be anything yeah. there are colleague teachers of yours who say um, just go fully into the story with them yeah that's an opportunity yeah. but you cannot say that if this situation arises that is the right yeah. response because yeah. then we're talking about rules yeah. freedom knows no rules freedom. so you never know yeah Freedom knows no rules. Yeah, or the, otherwise it's not freedom, but a code. Yeah. And what we are is that freedom. Yes. And if you live like that, you never know what you're going to do. And that's scary for the fear guy. Why is that scary? It, it likes to do things right. It's afraid to make mistakes. It's afraid to be uh, judged or kicked out or not mm -hmm. loved. Freedom isn't afraid of that, so... Yeah. And, and for you as living as that freedom, how does that work with uh, friendships and relationships? And are they, are they still important to you? Yes, but not in the way as before. Not to fill a hole. Mm -hmm. Uh, not um, like using your friends to get rid of anxiety or what we talked about before. Uh, I used to be uh, restless and fearful and anxious. So I surrounded myself with so-called friends all of the time. Did I really need to be with those friends? Was it love? I don't think so. I think it was an avoidance strategy. Yeah. When we would talk or make music or drink or whatever, or go to a, a, a pub or whatever, you didn't have to feel all this restlessness. Yeah. I think it was about that more. Not that I didn't also love them. Sure, it's always mixed. Mm -hmm. Now I don't, I don't even like that anymore. You know, going to a pub or yeah. seeking... When there's something in the system, the tendency is to look at it and feel it and not to uh, run to something or someone. Yeah. So friendships are still important, but it's without need. Yeah. And th that changes the quality of the friendship? or It can. It can also destroy it. Well, that people think, oh. Yeah, he doesn't care about me. Yeah. I do. But I don't call every week. Yeah. And I might say no when they want to come over or ask for yeah. some help. or yeah. It might be yes, it might be no, it might be I don't know. Where from the conditioned perspective, you always have to say yes. Yeah, because we are friends. We are friends, so... They are always 24 hours a day. Yes, and of course, when there's really something going on, and Eric, my best friend, calls, I will be in the car in five minutes, even yeah. though you're here, because yeah. i got to help him. Maybe yeah. I'll ask you to come along. When it's really something, yeah, but sometimes, well, we make music together, Eric and me, and sometimes he is calling, he has a new idea, great. And I know he would like to visit within a few days. Well, we, we um, make an appointment for in like two weeks, yeah. and I know he doesn't like to wait that long, <laughs> I get that, but I don't feel like making music now. Yeah. People could say that is... Uh, egocentric. Yeah, sure. And they may. I, is that the case? No, I. not for me. But everybody has the right of his own opinion, mm -hmm. obviously. If I don't feel music, mm -hmm. 
there there is no point yeah. in coming together yeah. and fake music yeah i might like to see him yeah so i told him for our next appointment come on and bring your stuff and we listen to what you made but i don't think we're going to do something yeah but maybe we'll have a walk also that's nice. also yeah. nice yeah. and he knows me for like 30 years so he knows what has changed and what not mm -hmm. so he's okay with it but some people had a hard time with me not uh, playing in the conventional uh, expected roles yeah sure so it's about honesty <coughs> that's quite important yeah, yeah sure when you dare to be honest with yourself <laughs> that's a huge step already mm -hmm. you know and it translates to being honest to yeah which does not mean by the way and that our mistakes are made in the past and maybe still uh, other ones have to judge that that you always have to say what you think yeah for example if i would ask you what do you think about my new vest i'm wearing yeah then i wouldn't say what i think <laughs> <laughs> I still think it's a beautiful vest. <coughs> no, but I know what you mean. Do you still follow a little bit of, of, of rules we made into, into society? No, no, it's not like that, but it's, uh, it's not about being unkind. Hmm. So if I see that you are happy with your sweater or, mm -hmm. or vest or whatever, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. I don't really have an opinion about it. No. So when you're happy about it, I say, oh, I'm glad you're happy about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've been talking now for uh, more than 20 minutes. We haven't used all the terms out of the Advaita world. Good. Yeah, <laughs> you like that. Uh, am I sitting here with an Advaita teacher? or what That's what I'm called. Yeah. yeah. No. And, um, and other ones say that I'm not true to the teaching. Oh. Well, whatever. Yeah. Maybe we could call you a freedom teacher from now on then. Because freedom is a word that... No, I, I, when I speak about it, even in, in English, it gives me a sense of joy, mm -hmm. freedom. Ah, it's associated with vacation and mm -hmm. being free and not bound and can I can do anything. So, um, yeah, Advaita, um, everybody who's watching this movie knows it's about the wholeness or the oneness. Is that right? Well, that's what it's called. Yeah. I, I wouldn't use that term. but What would you use? Reality, completeness, silence, freedom. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to myself right now? Yes. There's only you. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that immediately brings up. Uh, I don't want to fill it in, but okay, we're filming this. It gives me goosebumps when you say that. Okay, good. Is that because I know deep down inside that yes. that is the truth? Everybody does. Yeah. And everybody longs for it and fears it. Okay, that longing part I can understand. But um, the fear is why? Fear of freedom. Again, when you follow rules, you know what you have to do. And you know how you're supposed to behave. Mm -hmm. And you will be a good member of the herd. When you're free, yeah, nobody's gonna tell you what to do. You have to figure it out on your own. In the moment, there are no rules. Anything goes. Uh, it's impossible to dramatize. It's impossible to complain. It's impossible to worry. Yeah. So who the fuck am I, if I I cannot worry or have goals in the future or be ambitious or all the normal stuff is absent so you don't you're not freedom isn't giving you anything it takes everything away you could say that is scary for people it almost feels like dying i think it's over dramatizing stuff because i don't feel dead at all and i know that everything that is perceived is temporary and everything that is perceived is basically me. It's all an ex extension of me, not not the person. The Hans character doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not important. But everything perceived is also me. 
and the silence and that which is perceiving everything it's whole so even if I take your house and your car away you st that you still think well it's not I, I don't know what I would think but it wouldn't disturb the completeness hmm. yeah it doesn't mean that if somebody tries to steal your or my car no. that I will sit by and uh, <laughs> go ahead yeah. I don't know no. Because again, there are no rules. Yeah. I might be uh, fierce, mm -hmm. or start to laugh, or well, we're but, living in a forest. Yeah. I might break yeah. off a branch, and okay, you yeah. take it. I break your arm. Yeah. It could be anything. Or you could think, well, it was a stupid car anyway. Let him have it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, but that that's freedom. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I'm thinking about. Uh, a colleague of yours, where I stay sometimes, Joannika, mm -hmm. her whole farm. Yeah, it burned down. It burned down. It was a beautiful place. Yeah. yeah. And she was standing there, I was thinking, oh, look at the flames. Look how the paper is <laughs> dancing on the flames. But the police officer standing next to her was saying, ma'am, you have to go inside. You're going insane. Yeah. And she said, hey, keep your fears to yourself. I'm enjoying the show. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. But later on, she got into uh, a lot of trouble with also the insurance company because they thought, well, this woman has said such crazy stuff yeah. when her farm was burning down. She probably lit it herself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. That that's the ego versus the freedom, and the the ego, the fear factor, can never understand stand a liberated being. Same thing happened to Osho, a guy I was told threw a knife at him. At a, at a seminar or mm -hmm. whatever it was called and he just moved to the side and the knife missed him and he kept <laughs> kept talking so the police said this could that that didn't happen because you should be scared or angry or react to that yeah. But yeah, great. Yeah. so okay how is it for uh, for you as freedom living in a world full of persons who are anxious and uh, fearful all the time is, it, is, is that is, is this a great place to be then yes for a while so there, there are basically two perspectives from an absolute standpoint there are no other creatures so nobody's suffering and that is not a thing uh, an opinion that is something felt in the background mm -hmm. On the other hand, because consciousness moves, we talked about emotions earlier, consciousness moves towards things, so consciousness also moves toward people who are suffering. That's why the door is open, I guess, mm -hmm. and I do what I do, because basically there's no reason to do it. It's all one anyway, yeah. Yeah, to keep it yeah. simple. Still, this, this meeting capacity, moving towards things, is there. So this organism is just used to touch with result or without result to, to try to touch people and yeah. maybe something happens is this freedom um, how do you call it like um, radioactive stuff mm -hmm. is it very contagious uh, only to those who are ready so Ramana Maharshi uh, used um, um, a way of, of explaining that he said say I'm a, I am fire and somebody comes along who is a wet block of wood it will not catch fire immediately it has to dry first yeah, yeah. but if somebody brings a handful of straws mm -hmm. it will ignite mm -hmm. immediately yeah so that all depends so some people come here and they think I don't get what the guy is talking about other people will be quiet almost immediately uh, some people will get what I'm saying in 10 minutes and others will come years on on end yeah to meetings or private sessions and to me it's all good yeah it doesn't make any difference that there is no judgment uh, there's not the thought that a handful of straw is higher than a wet block of yeah. wood although if the block of wood is still too wet I might say uh, go do yoga for a year or travel the world or get a job or stop your job uh, yeah. you know it the organism we're talking about uh, will have to have different experiences before being ready 
So that's the way to get dry. Yeah, you have to get dry. Is it then about uh, getting experience or losing your your old karma? What what, what is it about? How to Not get necessarily dry? karma, but in in some cases, when when the wood is wet, mm -hmm. some changes need to be made, mm -hmm. some different experiences. Yeah. So if somebody is closing himself off and and sitting in his room, yeah. he I might advise him to go out, yeah. go out go out into the world, travel. Yeah. Uh, get a job, uh, start performing mm -hmm. when you're scared of people or you know when some when some other one is constantly filling his space with a lot of people, I might advise him to sit for six months on the top of a mountain in a cabin without a cell phone and you know yeah. just be with himself. yeah it could be anything yeah so if if, if a very uh, uh, important banker sits here on the couch, and he's feeling, feeling miserable, you could say, stop your banking job. Yeah, obviously, yes. Yeah. And do people follow your advice? Uh, usually not. <laughs> they think the they the, the wet blocks yeah. usually don't. But still, a seed is planted. Hmm. So usually they won't immediately do what is suggested. But it's in the system now. Yeah. And if there is a small recognition in a recognition, it will start to grind and, yeah. you know. It cannot be stopped. No, but it can be postponed very long, but yeah. something will occur. People don't walk through this door just by chance, you know. They already experienced some stuff. Maybe they had a, a, a short a glimpse of truth or uh, they're in a crisis or whatever. Or they read something. Yeah, or in my case, tried out everything in the world. Mm -hmm. Except for gambling, I tried out everything in, in very massive states. Mm -hmm. Well, gambling and drugs I didn't do. but mm -hmm. And then you, you, you come to a point, this yeah, yeah. will not work anymore. Yes, exactly. So that's a ripening. And that has to occur. And, well, you, you reach that state by living. By yeah. experiencing yeah. things, by going for things and seeing this is not it. Yeah. So good for you. Yeah. Next level. It's exactly what your uh, uh, former colleague Alexander Smith says. You have to be filthy rich once. You have to be uh, poor as street rat. Mm -hmm. Just go out and. Exactly. Explore those. Yes. Yeah. And then you know, and yeah. then the moment can come. That, that that the attention who is always outward can go in looking for the essence for the truth within yeah um there are some color teachers of yours who say well and i don't know if you agree with them uh, or if you say that life will bring you these things you there's you don't have to sit and wait for uh, big things to occur mm -hmm. they occur all the time basically they do so it doesn't have to be, we're now talking about big things, being rich, being mm -hmm. poor, but can it also be in, in waiting in line in the supermarket? Yes, of course. And getting agitated and thinking, ah, what a stupid supermarket. Mm -hmm. That's also... Yes, everything points towards the duality of being free or being not. Mm -hmm. And both things will be put constantly in our face. Mm -hmm. And at a certain p moment, we'll be, we'll be aware enough to notice the difference. Hey, this is strange. I was in line waiting and I felt good. Yeah. And yesterday, I felt like killing the cashier. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. You know, or, or other things, little things that you feel during life drop away, that you always used to yeah. be sad about this. And now you're perfectly cool with it. Yeah. Something happened. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that nothing will um, touch you anymore. No, surely not. You but there, there won't be any resistance. So from a freedom sta freedom standpoint, strange language, uh, there still can be feelings and being touched by something or moved, but there's no resistance. So yeah. it goes through the system exactly as it wants to move through the system mm -hmm. and then it's gone yeah so it doesn't take much time so still when you watch a movie you can get 
uh, emotional during a, a, a scene where some uh, dog dies or yeah, especially something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, because some people think, well, this is a Vita stuff. This is about uh, shutting off your feeling and just no. being like a robot all the time. No, no. Absolutely not. It's the, the falling away of the resistance yeah. and the judgments. So if the system has to be set right now, it will be allowed to be set. And then it will be gone again. But the sadness will not be felt as a problem or something bad or negative. Something to get rid of. Yeah. No. The, Exactly, because basically emotions are energy. The guy I know said emotion is energy and motion. Yeah. That's nice. So whether it's a red energy or a blue energy, it's energy. There is no negative energy, mm -hmm. you know, but from the ego standpoint, uh, happiness or uh, love or attention will be seen as positive mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. sadness and jealousy will be labeled negative yeah. from consciousness standpoint All the it's, same. it's just energy moving yeah so what yeah another thing that is talked about frequently in these advaita circles uh, is the free will <laughs> Um, uh, f people I hang around with, mm -hmm. I'm not saying everybody. Um, can you tell us something about that, Hans? Did I come out of free will here to talk to you in English? No, of course not. It just happened. Yes, it happened because of a lot of movements and happenings in the past, which put you on this path. For example, me learning English in school. Uh, that's that's a part of it and you what you earlier said trying out this trying out mm -hmm. that and it, it all didn't work and then at some point non-duality came in mm -hmm. view and you started to look into that and you discovered that I and some other people were talking about that you didn't control that you, you didn't decide when you were eight uh, when I'm I don't know what 40, your age is 41, 41 <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna sit with Hans and have a little chat no. in English I well I didn't either no I think I would, I would call you crazy if you told me this is at 21 in 20 years you're going to do interviews about something called Advaita yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah that, so so that says it just occurs yeah all kinds of energies are moving us in different directions and everybody knows this you're walking in the street and suddenly you see somebody and you're struck by lightning and you go after him or her and because you do and, and you you start living together and you may have kids you move to another place you meet new mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. did you do that it happened yeah no doer no doer and free will when you feel will i want this it's not free it's force yeah you have to yeah you know so of course there is will yeah. or wanting something but it's not free no it it, it overcomes you or mm -hmm. it, it gets you and you have to yeah, be a, a soccer player yeah. or you have to steal the camera yeah. or whatever it yeah. is that's what most people tell uh, tell you when they're full of something they say i couldn't do otherwise Voila. it had to be done yes so there is yeah. no free will that, that that's yeah insane still the jails are full of people who have been told that it's their fault yeah. yes that's that's the way we organize things yeah because it's all from the uh, separate perspective so when we think we're all separate beings you're responsible yeah i get that so when i'm driving with the car and i, I drive into somebody I will not say, ah, there's nobody here and it's all consciousness moving. I will say sorry. Yeah. Or asshole. Yeah. You had to let me go or whatever. Yeah. Whatever comes. But I won't make an Advaita excuse. No. Because nobody thinks like that. You know? And when everybody would think it won't happen, but would think like that, I wouldn't have to explain anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still I can imagine that you are uh, quite a popular uh, Advaita teacher or uh, uh, giving meetings, Pe a lot of people come to you and they think, or maybe they do, look up to you. Yeah, they think, yeah. oh, he's the man that represents freedom for me. Yeah. I have to be near him all the time, I have to visit all his meetings, read all his books. What do you say? Those? What would you say to someone like that? Uh, it's irrelevant what I try to say because they will still 
perceive me as they perceive me. But often in satsang or in meetings, I say, you don't know nothing about me. You only see me when I perform, mm -hmm. when I'm on duty, being the teacher. But mm -hmm. I'm not a teacher. The teacher is a role. You know, later on, I'll, I'll be the dog walker mm -hmm. or, or the typist or, or the cleaner. Mm -hmm. or yeah. So they don't know me. You once said in, a, in our Dutch interview, don't mistake the, the mailman who yeah. brings the love letter. Yes, at, uh, with the letter. Yeah, yeah, the love letter is the thing yes. that it's about, yes. not the man who brings it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So every organism, including this one and that one, is flawed. Mm -hmm. You know, that's okay. But it's about the message and not about the messenger. Yeah. But that's a mistake that's part of the game. Yeah. We always do that. And that's why there are a lot of trouble in spirituality in general, general yeah. because people have perceptions and then moving on, they start to see, hmm, but he still does this or that or whatever yeah. for me or, or anybody. And then they're disappointed or angry. Yeah. And of course, there are people out there who are not about truth or, or really spirituality, but about power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's part of the learning game. Yeah. But still, people had a lot of comments on Osho eh, with his sure, 24 sure. Rolexes and limousines. Yeah. Um, could, so, could, could a mass murderer bring this message? Yes. Don't think a lot of people would come and visit him and believe him? No, or live through it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anything is possible. It's not likely, but anything is possible. That's one of the funny things about this dream theater. Mm -hmm. Anything goes. Usually things go like this and this and this, but sometimes, yeah. you know, most of the time when we talked about the wet wood and the, the straw, sometimes somebody comes in and I think, oh my God, the water is leaking out, yeah. you know? And, How does that and within three or four meetings, yeah. something is changed completely. So I was wrong. Mm. And sometimes, usually I have it right. And sometimes I think, oh, this one is a piece of cake. You know, I only have to say this and that, and then he'll get it. Yeah. And a year later, he still didn't get it. So I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's very funny. But anything is possible. Yeah. Still about it, uh, worshipping you. Is, isn't it really also a childish thing? When, when I was a child, I was fan of a group called Dumar, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the famous Dutch uh, group. Yeah. Because their music touched me, it gave me mm -hmm. a great feeling, it, it was freedom to me. And then I thought, oh, it's because of these guys. It's these guys who bring mm -hmm, freedom. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the same right now for people who are 40, 50 years old, they become a fan of Hans yeah. Laurentius. Yeah. And they forget about that it's not about Hans Laurentius, it's about what he's saying and where he's pointing at. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's unavoidable. And before, when I had the center, it was worse than now. You were center. Yeah, because yeah. then there is a, a, a steady F place. A fan base. Yeah, <laughs> which, which, which kind of goes to feeling like home for ah, visitors, yeah. you know, when it's there for 10 years. And there it was worse. And now there are uh, loose meetings and yeah. some weekend retreats. And yeah. so it's more free. Yeah. And I'm a little more blunt these days than I was. I basically say the same. And I, I was confrontational always, but it's a little, got a little worse. Maybe because of this, God, I don't want that. I'm not seeking adoration. I'm trying to find a way. Yeah. Yeah, consciousness basically is trying to find a way to make consciousness see. Yeah. It's impersonal. But people take it personal. Yeah. yeah, obviously, of course, that's their reference point yeah they but it's not, not mine they do not know better and, no. they, and they did the same with jesus yes of course and there's no reason to blame them but you can try to uh, play with it to wake them up out of that yeah you know so sometimes uh, ignore and not by planning yeah but sometimes somebody is ignored and then later on it comes to me or she comes to me i was pissed off at you why what did i do you didn't even look at me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. 
All the people want to sit in front of you at the, the first row. And some or other ones want to hide in the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some love me and some fear me. And some others can just be with me. Hmm. That yeah. that's most relaxing for me if we just can see yeah. eye to eye. Equally. Yeah, that that's the best part. But pff. yeah. Still, maybe some people are watching this in four or five hundred years, and they started the Hans Lorenzus Church. Oh my God! But they think in 2016 there was a man wearing uh, an orange shirt who talked truth all the time, and we missed it then. But that was the Messiah who came back on earth. Well, the Messiah is saying, "I'm not the Messiah. Don't start a church. <laughs> Burn I, will, it I will not <laughs> sanction it. <laughs> Look for yourself. Yeah. Look for yourself. Yeah." You can yeah. use anything to be inspired, but you don't want to be a follower, because then you're following somebody else. Mm -hmm. You got to be you. You got to find out what you are. Yeah. And not being a, a clone. Yeah. But Hans, in this way, you're not going to become the, the best-selling author. No, I won't. I'm not going to get rich. <laughs> I'm very sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it's very honest, again, that you do, uh, do talk about this this uh, way, because there are uh, enough teachers who almost seem to enjoy all the kissing their feet and hugging. Yes, of course. Of course, it's great for what remains of the ego. When I had the center, there were hundreds of people there, coming there. And parts in me really liked the adoration. Yeah. And that's what I st when I started to get scared a little. Because that was not the point. That was not why I was singing mm -hmm. my song. Mm -hmm. But I could feel, ooh, and people in love with me. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. I had to really be honest and look within to get that out. So it was helping me too. But I was, I was happy when that was out of my system. And then the center could stop. Yeah. Whew. What a relief. Yes. Yeah. It was great for the 10 years that was there, that beautiful things happened and, you know, people changed and it was yeah. great. But there were also downsides. Yeah. Um, we have about 10 more minutes. I would like to ask you about another statement in the Advaita world. Mm -hmm. This world is an illusion. Hmm. How can I use this to find my freedom? Non-attachment, just thinking, well, it's just colors, smells, but it's nothing, has nothing to do with me. Well, what do they mean by saying this world is an illusion? I don't know what others mean by that. Do, would you say such a statement? Sometimes do, but not regularly. No. But you could say it's not much different than the dream state, hmm. where you also perceive a sort of center that's called me. Mm -hmm. And that me is having all kinds of experiences. It's the same now. But when you step back a little, you can, I think, fairly quickly notice that it's all perceptions. Smells, feelings, bodily sensations, emotions, thought patterns, images. They're moving in view and out of view. But there's something just viewing. So, from that standpoint, nothing is real in the sense that it's absol absolute, unchanging, or forever. It's all... Passing by. Yeah, it's pixels. You know, it has no real substance. So, in that sense, yeah, sure. On the other hand, everything you experience is also you. So, you could also say the only illusion is the idea of a separate entity. So the world, whatever that may mean, is not an illusion. You are an illusion. Because a mistake is often made in this uh, topic that people start to say everything is an illusion, but they forget themselves. They forget the first identification as me being somebody, mm -hmm. something separate. That's the illusion. Consciousness never will say anything is an illusion or real. It doesn't attach to anything. It has no judgment. It doesn't bother with that. No. no. So basically, I think traditionally the remark was only made 
to make people aware of spending all their life energy in the world, yeah. in, in their position in society, uh, their belongings, uh, their, their, their status, yeah. their money. You know, that is wrong to invest all your energy in that. So I like to say you got two eyes, one for the world, for the objects, the things, and one for infinity. And I think a true human being uses both eye, both eyes, mm -hmm. one for infinity, wholeness, right here, right now, for free. And he is there, I'm here, this is a camera, that car is his, that car is mine. Mm -hmm. No problem. But if both eyes are, are turned on the object, you're lost. Still, that's how most people, and I was living for 40 years. Yes. Thinking that, 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 that I can find myself in the world. Yeah. And I can find freedom in the world. Yeah. Can I conserve things? Don't yeah, take it, them away. It, it's basically very strange, because anybody, and you're an intelligent guy too, could think up in two minutes <laughs> that everything I perceive is fluctuating. Yeah. I never had a feeling that lasted. Yeah, they all come and go. Mm -hmm. I never had a thought was, that was absolutely true or constant, because they come and go. Relationships, they come and go. Uh, illness comes and goes. Money comes and goes. I cannot find anything in this so-called world that is permanent. And still, I'm seeking permanent happiness there. <laughs> well, good luck to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, strange indeed. People cannot think. They don't really look. They don't really question things. I believe I can be happy to portray myself like this or that in the world, and yeah. then I'll be permanently blissful. Yeah in a world that is permanently fluctuating yeah. and changing. Come on, yeah. wake up. It's yeah. impossible, it will never happen. And all the time, this real happiness, which is very quiet, not so screamingly happy, is in the background. You can lean against it, as a matter of speaking, mm -hmm. and just enjoy the show. Just like in a theater. Yes. This comfortable seat yes and just enjoy the show instead of thinking that you're one of the characters yeah. and being scared or happy all the time yeah relax and sit back and it's even worse you're the perceiver of the theater and the so-called you sitting there yeah you're, you're even outside the theater you are that which is not moving never changing unaffected nothing ever happened to you but if you project yourself completely in the world, oh, you're so vulnerable. So yeah. I, I get it that people are scared and trying to hold on to things and trying to be a good guy or a nice girl yeah. to, to get attention or whatever. Uh, to go back to the theater, we act like people who um, are in a theater in the early days when uh, cinemas were not that, uh, uh, people were not that used to, they started shouting at the screen. Yeah. Watch out! Yeah, <laughs> stop, there's a train coming. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, first yeah, time yeah. someone saw a movie with a train, they ducked. Yeah, they sure. The trains. sure. Yeah. There's a fire breaking out and yeah. the theater ran <laughs> empty. <laughs> yeah, but still, when yeah. I think about it, but that's, yeah. that's, that's how that's we, what we what, that's, that's what we call life. Yeah. It's yeah. not life, it's... it's a theater. This yeah. is a, a dream theater, yeah. and it's beautifully made. If you relax a little, it's yeah. beautifully made. Every day things happen. Yeah. And still, when we wear those virtual reality glasses, we go into the computer game. We start shooting and and doing anything without yeah. fear. Yeah. So could we say uh, and see this as like a big computer game we're in? Yes. No, there's not. Nothing that Nothing really, can be really happening. Yes. Yeah. Although when you really see that, it's quite unlikely you would be running around with a machine gun. You, 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 you need hate and anger and a belief system to start shooting yeah. up people or throwing bombs or yeah. 
believing that my way is better than your way. Yeah. You know, we are saying that IS is, is wrong and IS is saying we are wrong. Yeah. And they're both, both sides are believing all kinds of shit, yeah. which I don't believe in. I don't believe either side, but I'm not gonna run around uh, like a maniac with a gun. That's because you know you're shooting yourself? It, because it's pointless. And I have no belief system to defend. And I don't have to uh, be right. Yeah. Or, or have followers. So, so yeah. Everybody has to think like me. Yeah. That would be boring. But it still makes sense from the point of view of a person who is very scared about losing everything. Sure. Give me something to hold on to. Yeah, sure. The Bible, the Koran. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or... or Neoliberalism -lib yeah. or communism yeah. or something to believe ah, in. Yeah, that yes. I have some yes. reference point where I yes. can stick to. Yes. Yeah. Then you need rules. And then your freedom is gone. Obviously. Yeah. And it's all bad thinking because you can notice that it's just a conviction. It's not a truth. It's a thought. You have to keep repeating and pushing emotional energy into to say those people are bad or yeah. my way is the right way or yeah. for what and go to church every Sunday so yeah that you can get reassured again that this yeah. is the truth yeah 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 and, and you you cannot make jokes about God oh no you know or Mohammed yeah what the, what yeah. the hell is that if they're so powerful would they care <laughs> You know, think so. what kind of a childish gods are that? Yeah. You know, you can't stand a joke. Yeah, Hans, we have a few more minutes left. It was very nice talking to you. Can you, can you give us some practical information for people who are touched by this conversation? You have a website. Yeah, sure. HansLorentius.nl. That's it, and you can find anything there. Satsang videos, books. Yeah. Uh, my latest book is translated into English, so maybe it will be put out. Mm -hmm. There are some English um, articles there. Yeah. And if if somebody would be around and uh, would like to talk, we can do it in English for as far as my English oh. goes. So. And you're uh, living in the north of uh, Limburg? Yes, just, just below Nijmegen. Yeah. And uh, do you also do Skype sessions with no. people? No. Telephone? No. No. Email? No. Uh, when Sometimes. it's a short question, yeah. but I think the face-to-face -face thing is the best. So there are meetings and there are individual possibilities, yeah. but I'm not Skyping or anything. Yeah, Just go to google.nl or .com, type in Hans Laurentius and you will find anything. Thanks again for this nice uh, yeah. conversation. Thank you too, it was great. Yeah. Thanks.